Darian Daniels, one of the standouts here down in uh, Mobile, and at the at the and at the end of a very long week too, man. I'm sure that you've had uh, a lot of great experience here on the field, off the yeah. field, uh, including tonight. I mean, the recent the parade and everything like that. How was that out there? That was you? fun. Uh, it's like my it's not my first time being in the parade, but it's my first time being in the parade where we were the center of attention. That yeah, was, it was nice. Yeah, so let's start with your week down here in Mobile. I mean, uh, you know, you came down here. It's a huge experience from media day to weigh-ins, which is honestly one of the weirdest traditions ever. I mean, with hundreds of people sitting there writing down notes. Um, and then also on the practice field and everything like that. Just overall, how was your entire week down here in Mobile? I feel like, I feel like it was really productive. I felt like just me being here um, opened a lot of doors for me. I felt like I got, the, um, I feel like I got a lot of uh, publicity that I think I, I really much needed. I feel like I got the right message out there about me and my game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely showed on film. Um, you won against a lot of good guys, a lot of interior offensive linemen this week. Who would you say is the toughest guy that you faced throughout this week? Uh, I like Hennessy uh, from Temple. Yeah, he's a good one. Dude's a, dude's a pretty pretty solid baller. And then, uh, I forget his name, but Buddy from Washington. He's oh, Harris. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nick Harris is a good one, too. He's pretty solid as well. All right, so at the end of this week now, though, looking back, uh, do you regret any – decision to come down here at all? Do you think you really helped yourself down oh, here this week? Oh, yeah, there's no regret at all. Um, I feel like coming out here was actually the best choice for me. And I just think that, you know, overall it was just the best decision. I feel like I got a lot from it. All right, great. So um, going back before the Senior Bowl here now, you know, I was looking at something. I was doing some research before we came over here. And I saw that you, you grad transferred to Nebraska. You know, you, you went to, uh, to uh, Oklahoma State, um, had a couple of years there, um, and then you transferred to Nebraska. So what went into that decision to transfer to Nebraska? Not that Nebraska is a bad school or anything like that, but, uh, you know, why'd you go to Nebraska? I have a younger brother, okay. uh, and prior, uh, prior to me transferring there, he was already there. So uh, while he was playing there and I had my injury, um, we sat down and had a, had a conversation, and that was – that was the conclusion of the conversation. He wanted me to come in and play my last year of eligibility with him. Um, and I talked to some coaches and I talked to my teammates about it, and they all, you know, they all kind of agreed that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, refuse. So I made the decision to go there. Okay, great. And then, you know, when you transferred to Nebraska, um, I saw that you were a team captain. You know, right after transferring there, I mean, that that's unheard of. I've never really seen anything like that you know you just kind of walk in and become a team captain so how did that go down I mean was it voting on it was yeah, it coaches yeah. what happened so um I want to say it was was it fall no was it spring I think I want to say it was a spring game I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure no it wasn't a spring game I lied I lied I <laughs> it was um it was uh like during fan appreciation day okay um they they announced the captains and what happened was like two or three days before they did a team vote. Okay. And, yeah, and it wasn't, you know, balanced. It was just, you know, handwritten names, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people wrote my name, wrote my name down. And it was kind of surprising because there, there's a lot of leaders, you know, in Nebraska right now. There's yeah. a lot of guys who are great, great leaders and great captains, you feel me? And I feel like just me coming in and being me, uh, holding a lot of people accountable and me pushing myself beyond the standards and beyond, you know, what was expected of me, I feel like a lot of people were, were noticing. And, you know, they thought it was good enough to be a leader. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it definitely showed this year you had one of your most productive years. I do want to talk about one play in particular, though. You know, as a defensive tackle, I, I think you know what play I'm going to yeah. talk about here. <laughs> defensive tackle, you don't get many opportunities to catch the ball. Yeah. Uh, but you got your first career interception this past year on a, what was it, shovel pass, shovel pass right out the middle yeah. there. You, you took it and you almost scored. Yes. Almost scored. You're very close. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, what was going through your mind throughout that play? I mean, that, I'm sure that was probably your favorite play of your oh, whole yeah. career right there. Uh, well, prior to the play, you know, I, I looked at the backfield and kind of had an idea of the ball going uh, to my left. Uh, so I, I played, you know, my sound technique. Yeah. Got moved away, so I'm moving with it. And I felt heavy pressure from the center, but I saw a running back coming through the next, uh, to the, the eight, uh, no, it was the B gap. Yeah. The B gap uh, to my right. And... I already knew I wasn't in position to, to really get a tackle for a loss. So mm -hmm. I spun around, hoping that I could grab the running back before he could move past the hole. And when I turned around, big spin, running back didn't have the ball. Oh, oh, right there. So my head turned, and he <laughs> came and did the test. Yep. Grabbed it, and was like, go. Went, and everything else kind of just happened a little too fast. Mm -hmm. Only thing, last thing I remember after the catch was, you know, me falling. And a few yards away from it's the so touchdown. Cool. Yeah. Was your brother on the field when that play happened? No, he okay. wasn't. But it's funny because I, I'm pretty sure before I even got tackled, he was on the field. 
Yeah, he was already <laughs> running out there to <laughs> yeah. congratulate you. So you're the first one between the two of you to get um, an interception or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, so last couple questions here I want to ask about your game in general. You know, you, you came down here, a lot of the one-on-ones, obviously. Um, you played some one-tech, some zero-tech and all that. Where do you feel most comfortable going to the NFL? Uh, I'm, I'm really I'm really comfortable playing a whole D-line. Uh, I played D-line my whole entire life, mm-hmm. and, I, and I played all of them. Uh, I'm just comfortable being on the field, honestly. Yeah. I'm just comfortable being on the field. Wherever I feel like I'm needed is where I want to play. Um, I, done, I did a lot of three technique at Oklahoma State, okay. and I, then I played zero nose at, at Nebraska. I'm comfortable playing both of them. All right, great. And then, uh, you know, a big thing that really stood out in film, when, when I watched in your film, is one, your motor, and two, your strength, which we obviously saw, saw down here as well. Would you say those are two big parts of your game that you're going to be, like, translating here to the next level? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, it's the, it's the, it's never the plays that, you know, that you're supposed to make that the are the most impactful ones. It's the ones yeah. that you're not supposed to make. So, just me being able to run down the field, you know, running backs and receivers, they don't see me coming. So, when they feel me, it's like, you know, the ball might pop out or yeah. it, it gives my team an opportunity to, you know, strip the ball out and things of that nature. So, that, that's, that's kind of where I get my motor from. And I always want to be around the ball. Yep. And my strength, uh, you know, I think in order to play in the middle, you need it. Yeah, I mean, so. for sure, for sure. And then, um, you know, one more aspect, you know, going to the NFL, a lot of it is the pass rush, mm-hmm. right? Uh, throughout your career, not super productive as a pass rusher. So what are you really focusing on, you know, kind of this offseason going to the draft to kind of improve as a pass rusher and oh, show teams that you can yeah. be a pass rusher? Oh, uh, really, it's kind of finding my own style. Yeah. You know, um, I learned a lot out here about my style. I'm talking to Coach Bo, he really um, kind of put things in perspective. He kind of put me in a category and – he thought that it helped me, you know, be more productive. And uh, the last practice, I kind of, I kind of did exactly what he kind of told me to. And he was just, I, I can tell he was kind of, you know, proud of me that I, you know, that I, I took in the knowledge and I retained it and, and I, you know, showed him the field. So just taking whatever he gave me and kind of building on that, that's kind of what I'm going to do. All right, perfect. For just a couple more questions here. Um, so this is a, a Colts interview here. I do a lot of these for the Colts and such. Um, so one thing in particular, you know, if you walk into this NFL, like the Colts in particular, um, you know, you may not be a starter right away. Mm-hmm. You know, going from being a grad transfer and starting and being a captain, I'm sure right when you came to Oklahoma State, you were playing a little bit, you know, when you came in. How would you feel kind of making that transition now to the NFL where, hey, I'm not a starter right away? How, how could you kind of deal with that transition there? Just learning. Yeah. Learning. Um, I don't see why... Of course, uh, being a star, I, of course I would like to be a starter, but yeah. I don't see what's the rush on it, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. Just being able to sit back and learn from those ahead of me, just being able to, you know, obtain as much knowledge as I can, I feel like it's just, I feel like it'll help me out more than anything. It's just not being able to, me not being thrown in a situation where I have to, it's sink or swim, it gives me time to, you know, learn and, and to adapt to the culture and, and adapt to the speed of the game. So I'm not, I'm not pressed on, pressed on, you know, how to wait my turn out things worked out for me so yeah for sure so I got one last question for you it's actually my favorite question to ask people here is because you know so much of what we see is what's going to be on the field right Mm -hmm. but if my team spends a draft pick on you in this class what am I getting not on the field but also off the field I feel like I'm just a a big teddy bear I feel like (laughs) I feel like everybody um I feel like anybody can can like me yeah I feel like I'm a very likable person Uh, I'm a part of fraternity Omega Sapphire and one thing that we do in our fraternity, we're very, um, we're very big in community service. Okay. And if I'm fortunate enough to get drafted by the coach, you know, I'll just do anything I can off the field to help, you know, anything charitable off the field, you know, giving back. And I'm, and I'm usually about giving back. All right, great, yeah. man. Well, I appreciate the time today. No um, you. I'm sure you've had a long and, and fun week, so I'm sure you're, you're ready to get back to training. Get out oh, of yeah, this area. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right, thank All you. Right, we're good.